Let's get over to Steve Leisman. He's standing by for the Fed, but he also has the ADP report. Steve, take it away. Becky, 156,000 is the ADP report for the month of July. Private sector payroll seen by ADP rising by 156,000. That is pretty much spot on with the uh, estimate of 150,000. June, which was a weak number, was revised up just a little bit by 10,000 to 112. The goods sector this month up 9,000. Service sector doing most of the weight here, pulling most of the weight, 146,000. And there's the non-farm payroll with 165. I wouldn't imagine there'd be very much tweaking to those estimates for the big Friday report. Small business, 11,000. They have struggled the last couple months, uh, so doing a little bit better right now. Uh, medium business, 67. Large business. This could be a, a, a question here of who has the... Uh, ability to attract workers in a scarce uh, uh, market for labor right now. Let's look at where the jobs have been. Education, health services up 37,000. If you don't know that that's on the top, you haven't been paying attention like the last two years. Trade, transport, 27. Leisure, hospitality, 26. Construction, not too bad, up 15. And financial, 11. Manufacturing, only 1,000. I want to show you, even though this number is higher than the prior month, the three-month average has been slowing, and it's been indicative of a slowing job market. You can see here our our job growth in ADP is about half of what it was back in January or so. So a little bit better on this month compared to June. But the three-month average suggests, Becky, that we are still slowing in terms of the overall job market. Steve, thank you. Stay right there. We've got more to talk about. Uh, in order to do that, let's bring in Michelle Meyer. She is the head of U.S. economics for Bank of America Mer Merrill Lynch Global Research. Also, Mark Zandi, who's chief economist at Moody's Analytics. And, and Mark, we're going to start with you. Uh, ADP numbers, uh, something we were watching very closely, right in line with expectations. How would you summarize what you're seeing right now? Uh, healthy job growth, but slowing. Uh, just to give you a sense of it, last year, 2018, average monthly job growth was close to 225,000. So far this year, we're down to 170. And it feels like underlying trend, you know, abstracting from the ups and downs in the monthly data is close to 150K. And uh, taking the brunt of the slowdown are small businesses. Steve mentioned that. But if you look at particularly very small businesses, those with less than 20 employees, job growth now has been has been negative for three months in a row. So the trade war, the uh, labor shortages, uh, what, what online re what's going on with online retailing is really doing a lot of damage to smaller uh, mom and uh, pop companies. Which of those would you put at the top of the list? Is it just impossible to compete with the bigger companies that can offer more perks or, or you think that this is really they're seeing a slowdown in demand for their products? I say all three things. I would, though, put at the top of the list labor shortages. I mean, you can see the real softness in things like uh, construction, leisure, hospitality, uh, you know, e even uh, education, health care. You know, that's where we're seeing the real constraints. Uh, but, but also the uh, online retailing retailers are, are laying off workers because of the competition. And, bec and the trade war is really doing now a lot of damage to manufacturing. We've seen a pretty sharp slowing there. Uh, transportation distribution and uh, uh, also ag related anything ag related is also a lot is, is pretty weak so all three of those things are, are contributing and i and by the way becky i would expect further slowing in job growth as we move through the year into next michelle um if, if you compare us to what we see with china today china had some manufacturing numbers that show their manufacturing is still contracting 49.7 so below 50 a little better than anticipated but still slowing how do you think this kind of measures up with what we're seeing at this point yeah i think that's a really important distinction which is that globally there's a manufacturing contraction um china leaving the way but actually the u.s hasn't contracted just yet. The manufacturing ISMs are still positive. Manufacturing jobs are still being added. They're slowing. There's clear weakness. But we haven't actually moved into negative territory for manufacturing. And we're going to get the ISM report later in the week. That should be quite interesting to see what it shows if it remains above the 50 break even. So on a relative scale for manufacturing, the U.S. has not done as badly as some of our trading partners. However, what you just lay out, maybe what the Fed is thinking about as they're considering cutting today, uh, watching what's happen off, happening off our shores and trying to maybe prevent that from, from, from landing here. Yeah, I don't think they're cutting because the domestic economy is in a really bad shape. Look, we're still creating jobs. We have over 150,000 on a trend basis. We think Friday's jobs report should show something similar. Even manufacturing, it's still positive, although much weaker. What they're really worried about is that the 
the, the pain that we're seeing abroad, which is partly driven by the trade uncertainties, is going to spill over to the U.S., and they want to get ahead of that. And that's why I think Fed Chair Powell is going to have to do a really good job in terms of explaining what that reaction function is. What exactly is driving him to cut rates right now, and how much more does he think is necessary to address these risks?